personal judgment on that. A little later on, we talked about going to Teterboro Airport, which is in New Jersey, and that's something I could see. And I remember looking out at that and thinking, I don't like the looks of that, and, and, and Sully also agreed. And we kept with the Hudson River because to get to an airport that was uh, on land, we'd have to be sure that we could make it because we had something with the Hudson River. The flight attendants in back, obviously they know something's wrong. They've heard the, or they've uh, uh, heard the birds impacting the airplane. They've heard the power loss, but still, they're trained that they, no matter how they're feeling inside, they have to appear calm on the outside. Because the first thing a passenger is going to do when they sense something wrong is they're going to try to find a crew member that they can see and see what they look like. So they have to try to remain calm. The passengers in back, the uh, left engine, people on the left-hand side, the uh, actual uh, gas lines that come out of the burner cans on the left-hand side and shooting gas right into the exhaust of the airplane and igniting it. So you've got this fire stream that's shooting out the back of the, the left engine. The right engine is just dead. But most of the people on the left side thought that, oh, we've got some sort of problem here. We're going to be returning to land on the engine on the right, which is operating. And the people on the right, of course, that engine didn't look at all. It looked as if it was uh, operating. So nobody really knew the kind of the dire situation that we were in at that moment. What I remember most about um, that descent to the river was all the noise that we had in the cockpit. You know, we have all manner of, uh, of uh, oral alerts that go off for various things, and, and every one of them was going off. We're getting ground proximity warning system alerts, which you normally get if you're going into high terrain, flying into mountains. You get this whoop, whoop, pull up, call up. We get uh, flew too close to a helicopter coming up the Hudson River, and we're getting a traffic traffic alert. The uh, automated call outs of too low gear, too low flap, meaning that we're descending and we got our gear up and our flaps up. We're continuous. They, we have an alert bell that's sounding continuously as it's uh, uh, as the uh, warning systems are sensing all these cascading failures. Through all this. Sully had the presence of mind to reach back and pick up the PA and say, this is the captain, brace for impact. Now this starts, this is a signal to the flight attendants to start their procedures. They start chanting, brace, brace, heads down, stay down, over and over and over again to get the passengers in the proper position for a crash landing. Now the passengers obviously know that we're not going to be returning to that airport. And they, 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 they handled it in a lot of ways. Some of them wrote notes to people they'd leave behind to put in their shirt pockets. Those that still had their cell phones on uh, texted their loved ones. There was a, one passenger showed me his text just a couple months ago when I saw him. He still had it on his phone after, after more than a year. It said, the plane's going down. I love you. Say goodbye to the kids. Now, through all this, though, I think up in the cockpit, you know, we always, we always were hopeful. Our initial thinking was that we're going to get one of these engines restarted and we're going to return to land at an airport. And I think after that, was apparently it was clear it wasn't going to happen, or at least not happen in time. We weren't going to get one started and spool up. Both of us felt that, you know, certainly a landing on the river was certainly possible and didn't see any reason why we couldn't do it. And this, the final descent down until we actually touched down, I remember this odd sense of having the, the skyscrapers of New York off of our, rising off of our left. It's kind of unusual for pilots because you usually have land in a wide open space. And here we got these tall buildings very close on our left-hand side and the bluffs in New Jersey on our right. And yet right before we touched down, our air traffic controller is still pointing out Newark Airport at 2 o'clock as if we could possibly make it. And Sully says, uh, got any other ideas? And I said, actually, no. We, we hit hard on the tail, and then the airplane just seemed to, it was, acted like it was burying itself in the river. It was just because of all the spray that was kicking up. But when you're in it, you're thinking you're going right to the bottom of the river. All this water was cascading over our windshields. But then it popped up with that tail low attitude that you saw in the pictures. And I remember it kind of rocking back and forth in the waves, just like you were in a little boat. I turned to Sully and I said, well, that wasn't so bad. <laughs> but 
you know, now we have to evacuate the airplane. And for some reason, we'd lost all electrical power. We should, still should have had battery power, but we didn't. So nothing was working. So he jumped up to manually command the evacuation and also help the flight attendants get the doors open and uh, inflate the rafts. I stayed behind because we had yet another checklist, evacuation checklist that we had.